for today's starting lineups. First for the visitors. D. Brevard College Tornado. At goalkeeper, number one, Jocelyn Spring. At defender, number four, Curran Sessions. At forward, number eight, Sarah Funger. God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for time here today on the field. Lord, we just ask that you would watch over us, Lord, and help us to compete and play this game with good will and good motives. Lord, let us show good team sportsmanship and continue to honor you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome to Pepsi Stadium here in Tigerville, South Carolina, home of the North Greenville Crusaders. Alan Cahaley with you today for the broadcast. Uh, it's 
been a hot day, but about ready for some NGU soccer. First game, the women between, uh, between North Greenville Boulevard and then the men immediately following. Going to specifics about each team in just a moment, but we are just about set to go. So here we go, North Greenville in the bright red uniforms, Brevard in the black and blue. North Greenville coming off of a season with two wins, 13 losses, one tie. Brevard six and 11 last year, so both teams thinking that this is probably a must win. Trying to get off to a good start to the season. And we're underway. plan is to have live stats for this game, but apparently they are not yet working, so don't have starting lineups for you as of yet. So here comes Brevard trying to get on the attack. And North Greenville goalkeeper going to collect it. Goalkeeper is number 33, Madeline Schober, sophomore from McKinney, Texas. taking their time. And that's gonna be out of bounds, so go to Brevard. Brevard up the sideline, North Greenville trying to clear it, but Brevard hangs on. Pass to number nine, Caitlin Burns. And now North Greenville with the ball. And so here is Lindsay Tooten, or no, nope, that's not Tooten. That was Olivia Schmidtke. Some players to keep your eye on. Lindsay Tooten returns from last year. She led the team in goals with four last year. For Brevard, it was Catherine Nichols and Lizzie Graham who led the team in goals. Nichols does return. She is now a senior. Lizzie Graham looks like she graduated. did play a preseason scrimmage this past Friday against Furman, losing two to nothing. 
I believe that Brevard played several scrimmages as well. That ball head out of bounds. It'll go to Brevard. Looks like Caitlin Gant, or excuse me, Kathleen Gant will kick this one off. And that one's going to be cleared. And it does make it down the field. Brevard might have an opportunity here. But North Greenville able to control it. Go back to the goalie. So here come the Crusaders. A little bit of a breakthrough. Brevard trying to kick it away. Might have an opportunity. And I believe that was a handball. I believe that was Ashton Robinson who was charged of it. So it'll go back to Brevard. And that one heads out of bounds. It'll stay with Brevard. Back to Schober. North Greenville being very patient with the ball. You've heard them shout out patient several times so far in this game from the bench. Head coach Andy Robinson returns for the Crusaders. For Brevard, the head coach Shigiyashi Shinohara from Yamaguchi University. Crusaders kick it out. Actually, that might be a corner kick, and it will be. So the Crusaders with an opportunity here. So here we go. Kick is up, and header that heads out of bounds, so it'll go Back to Brevard. Whistle blows. Stay with Brevard. This will be a free kick for the Tornadoes. Kicked up the middle. Brevard trying to come up with something, but Crusader is able to control it. And it'll go back to Schober. Crusaders up the middle. Now, here's Tootin. And kick is blocked by the Tornadoes, trying to kick it away, maybe clear it. And they do. Well, not quite. North Greenville kicks it back. Tootin with it. And a header. Rivard gets it away. And they will get it to midfield. Seen both teams be pretty conservative, but all of a sudden, both teams trying to move the ball. Especially the Crusaders. Now the ball heads up to the far side of the field and will head out of bounds. Looks like it'll stay with Brevard.
So the ball at midfield and it's gonna head out of bounds again. It'll be with the Crusaders this time. They'll head out, out of bounds yet again, but this time it goes through the Tornadoes. I do want to mention our normal play-by-play -play guy is currently in Charleston for the football game. So, And then our color guy is also in Charleston. So we're a little short-handed here, so doing the best we can. But meanwhile, the Crusaders will take over again. And we will have updates for that game throughout the night. That game is scheduled to begin at 7 between North Greenville and Charleston Southern. Opening football game for both teams. And North Greenville trying to keep it in bounds, not quite able to. New feature here at Pepsi Field, a brand new, uh, brand new scoreboard. And when I say brand new, I mean brand new. It was installed earlier today. but seems to be working fine. So here comes Brevard, might have a scoring opportunity and it's a nice stop by Schober. And so she will clear the ball up the midfield, a header by Brevard and might have an opportunity. Brevard trying to keep the ball away, and they do. They clear the ball, and now the Tornadoes take over. Might have another opportunity. And that one heads at, nope, not quite. Schober able to keep it, able to keep Brevard from having a corner kick. 34 minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the first half. So Robinson with the ball. And it's it. taken away by number 22, Shannon Bava. So the Tornadoes have been aggressive over the past few minutes. And here we go. Closest player for Brevard was Alexis Griffiths, but not quite able to keep the Crusader away from it and Schober able to keep the ball away. So the ball will be passed to number five, Karis Hoover. Unfortunately, live stats still do not appear to be working. So now Robinson with the ball, tried to get it to Tootin, but kicks it a little bit too far and Vard will take over. Several players fighting for the ball. Robinson with it, now back to, to Megan Robertson. And it's gonna be kicked out of bounds. It will, Crusaders were pointing their way as if it was their possession. Robinson appears to be shaken up. So anyway, a header that heads out of bounds for the Crusaders. So Brevard will now take over. out of bounds by Tootin, actually deflected out of bounds by her. So here come the Tornadoes, number 22 again, Shannon Bava. Now number nine, Caitlin Burns with the ball and Crusaders trying to take possession, but Brevard still with it. So 
Now the Crusaders with it. And may have an opportunity, they have numbers. But it gets away from them and Brevard will now take over. Just over 30 minutes remaining in this first period. And Crusaders still hanging on to the ball, but it will be cleared. And Schober's gonna kick it to a teammate. Hinako Omizu got kicked right in the back with the ball. But here comes Brevard. Have a little bit of a breakaway, but not able to do anything with it. It will be taken over by North Greenville. Catherine Allen with the ball. Goes back over to Brevard. Whistle does blow. So it looks like it will be a free kick for Brevard, I believe. So it will be a free kick. Twenty-eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. This will be a close free kick. So Brevard with a key opportunity here. Post. North Greenville with a huge break. That was a great strategy. Burns was acted like she was going to kick the ball and ended up kicking it just behind her for a teammate who ended up trying to kick it to the goal but ended up just off the left post. So here come the Crusaders. Very fortunate not to be down one to nil. But here comes Brevard again. That's number eight, Sarah, Sarah Fonger, or Fonger, one of the two. Bard just able to keep it in bounds, and it will be out of bounds. It will stay with Brevard. North Greenville did not agree. So here we go, up the sideline, and it's kicked away by the Crusaders. It'll head back out, so it'll stay with Brevard.
So it goes back to Schober, still scoreless here in the first half. 26 minutes left. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Broadcasting for the first time in 1080p, so we're excited about that and hopefully we'll be able to continue to increase the quality of these broadcasts. Again, short staffed with commentary as you can probably tell. But here come the Crusaders, an opportunity. Don't believe they've had, and that's, I believe that's their first shot of the game is gonna be high, but gotta start somewhere. Brevard with a kick to midfield. For the Crusaders, Karis Hoover was able to keep that ball away from Brevard, but now Sarah Fong Fonger will keep it. And a shot is going to be wide right. There was some contact, but the whistle does not blow. So it'll be a, be a goal kick. Back to Hoover. And so it'll be cleared by Brevard. It'll be kicked out of bounds. So the Crusaders will keep the possession. And a Brevard player down. Don't have the number as of yet. Still on the ground. It is a defender. She appears to be okay. She got back up and is back to running. So, Looks like Brevard does have somebody waiting to go in to the game in place of the player. So we'll let you know who that is as soon as we get the number. That player is number 12, Caroline David, freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't yet know who she'll be entering for. And here's a shot for the Crusaders, an easy save. But it is a shot, shot on goal. So that'll be the first one for the season for the Crusaders. And contact made between the both 20, both are out of the number 22. Now Sierra Singh with the ball, trying to keep it in bounds, and she does. Nice job there. But it, Brevard intercepts the ball. And it's going to be kicked to nobody, so it'll go out of bounds. So back to Schober, 22 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. This is the second season for North Greenville with the turf. It's been installed both here at soccer and at football. It will also be installed for the softball field, which is currently under construction, and eventually the baseball field as well, so a lot of turf on the way for the Crusaders. Also a track and field complex in the making. But right here, here comes Brevard again, Sarah Fonger. And a shot that's wide left. So it'll be a goal kick for the Crusaders. And so here's the substitution. Caroline David enters for number eight, Sarah Fonger. So 
So Schober gets the ball back underway. Seemed like Brevard started with the momentum, but sort of gone the Crusaders way over the last few minutes. But here comes Brevard. Here's Caroline David just like that. And she has an opportunity, still fighting for it. And the Crusaders with another break. Very fortunate that there wasn't another Brevard player right behind her. Otherwise, that would have been an easy goal. But here it goes to Brevard, and they do have numbers. So things have picked up here. And another shot by David, but that's going to be a very easy save by Schober. Crusaders take the ball to midfield. And Crusaders now with the opportunity. And nice job by a Brevard player, don't have the number. A nice job by her to kick that ball away. But it did head out of bounds, so it stays with the Crusaders. and goes out of bounds again. And another shot that's, and North Greenville wanted that one. They thought it was close, but not quite able to get the header in for the goal. But Crusader, Crusaders sh showing some fight here. And so now the Crusaders with the ball yet again. And Contact and the whistle does blow, so that will be, I believe there's gonna be a free kick coming up, possibly a penalty kick. And she might have been, no, she appears to be okay. And it's gonna be a penalty kick. So the Crusaders with a huge opportunity here. Clock did stop, so we'll fix that. And deflected and saved. So Brevard with a nice job of not giving up that goal. So it goes back to the Tornadoes. Finally able to see the number of the Brevard goalkeeper. It's number one, Jocelyn Springer, sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. So here comes Brevard. North Greenville with the ball, and it'll be kicked back to Schober. And contact, and a Brevard player down. That's, I believe that's Burns. But meanwhile, the Crusaders kick it back to Schober. And nice, 
Crowd impressed with that one. Made a move to get by the Brevard defender, faked her out. But the ball will be kicked back to Schober, cleared by Brevard. A look at the social stream, uh, Jacob413 asking if we can expand on how the new facilities are coming along. Uh, we will mention, we'll talk about that at halftime. And the two trailers to the right um, are, I believe those are the lacrosse dressing rooms. They've been there for a while, but um, I think they didn't have power for a long time, so they weren't used. But uh, they do have power now, and we know that because we're currently tapped into that power. So good to see that they've got that going. Um, don't know if that's temporary or... They're planning on having those there for a long time, but for now they are the lacrosse dressing rooms. So Crusaders trying to come up with another good possession. And trying to save it, and it heads out of bounds. So it'll go back to the Tornadoes. Still scoreless, 15 minutes remaining in the first half. So we'll have some substitutions, it looks like. Now entering the game for number 23, number 23, Sarah Forrester. As you heard, Sarah Forrester comes in to replace number four, Courtney Etheridge. So here, here comes Brevard. Haven't had a ton of momentum over the last 10 minutes or so, but trying to come up with a good possession here, and it will stay with them as the ball headed out of bounds. North Greenville wanted it, but the official did not agree. So the Crusaders have it at midfield. So now it'll go back to Jocelyn Springer, the goalkeeper for Brevard. Seems like both defenses have tightened up a bit here for the last few minutes. Be kicked the midfield. Heads out of bounds, it'll go to Brevard. Again, for those of you who didn't hear, it was announced during the summer that Brevard will, has begun a three-year transition to Division III. Don't know the exact reason, but do know that it's gonna take about three years to happen, so. Do know that a key difference is that there's no, I don't believe the there, the uh, meanwhile we'll have more Anita, substitutions. Scova, number 10, on, number 10, Anita Mary Scova is one of those players and number 16, Kath, Catherine Nichols will come back into the game. But do know one thing about division three, don't believe they have athletic scholarships. So that's interesting. Uh, so beginning a three year transition, Understandably so, give the players some time to either finish out their career or to transfer elsewhere, but it's got to be a tough move. And uh, But meanwhile, they Brevard stays competitive in their sporting events. We see them quite a bit in several different sports, including football usually.
North Greenville did play Brevard at Brevard last year. Brevard did take that game one to nothing. Based on what we've seen so far, it doesn't look like this will be a high scoring matchup. So here come the Crusaders as this first half starts to come to a close, just over 10 minutes remaining. And deflected off a of Brevard player, does stay with the Crusaders. And here come the Crusaders, an opportunity, but she's offside. So unfortunate for the Crusaders, but trying to come up with something there. So it heads back to midfield. And some contact, and I believe that'll be a free kick for Brevard. It was number five, Karis Hoover, charged with the foul there. So here comes the shot just over the goal. Now we need the game for your Crusaders, number 24, Emma Carr. Drop, 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 drop. So as you just heard, Emma Carr enters the game to replace number six, Alex Pagliaro. So here comes a kick. Brevard able to keep it away from the goal. Tries to clear it, and it heads out of bounds. So it heads back out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be a corner kick for the Crusaders. So here it is, and right to Jocelyn Springer. Brevard yelling, take it, so I'm going to try to turn aggressive now. This is number 16, Catherine Nichols again, who entered the game just a little while ago, or re-entered the game. This now goes back to number 10, Anita Mariscova. But it goes back to the Crusaders. And, but meanwhile, they're offsides. Brevard coach Shigi, Shigiyoshi Shinohara 
Giving some instruction there. And here is, and it's a goal. Goal for the Crusaders. We'll have to get a number in just a moment. But the Crusaders strike first here in Tigerville. And so that was Lindsay Tootin. So she led the goal, the team in goals last season with four, and she will start off leading it this season with one. So it goes back to midfield. Got a chance to talk to uh, the, a senior on the soccer team last year, Frankie Jumper, happened to sit next to each other in graduation, and um, she did tell me that Tootin wants it more than any other player out there. So. She is certainly somebody to keep your eye out on this season. So the ball did head out of bounds. It'll go back to the Crusaders. So North Greenville off to a good start to the season, leading one to nil with just five minutes remaining in this first half. And looking to attack again, here's Tootin. Trying to make a move, deflected by a Tornado player. Goes back to them. And some contact there, and it's going to go back to the Crusaders. Uh, did did mean to mention that at the start of the uh, broadcast uh, social stream, somebody talking about having some lagging issues. Uh, this is a 1080p broadcast, um, so it's possible if you don't have the strongest internet connection that you might be having some issues. Um, if you are having issues and you do believe that your internet connection is as strong as can be, let us know. Um, it might be on our end, but um, what I recommend doing is uh, taking your mouse over the screen. Um, it should say auto. Try switching that down to a lower resolution like 720p or 480. See how it does. Um, like I said, the, the higher the resolution, the more bandwidth it takes up, unfortunately. So um, you know, hopefully it's not on our end, but it's possible. So uh, just let us know. Um, if you're having issues or not, um, if we notice that a lot of people are having issues, then that'll be a clear indication that we need to bump our settings down a little bit. So just let us know. First broadcast of the season, so we're, we're certainly still trying to figure things out. But hope you've enjoyed it so far. And here's a shot just actually just ended up to the right. In the game for your Crusaders, number 10, Jamie Shutt. So Jamie Shutt comes in for the Crusaders, number 10. And she comes in, I believe, in place of number 11, Lauren Previtt. First half just about to come to a close, two and a half minutes remaining. Tootin lost a shoe, so she'll have to get that back on. But Crusaders keep possession. Get to the middle. 
And knocked away by the Tornadoes. We'll see if they can come up with a last minute possession. Crusaders still hanging on to it. They're going into conservative mode. It'll be passed back to Schober. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds by the Tornadoes, so it stays with the Crusaders. One minute remaining. Crusaders passing it inbounds with just 32 seconds remaining. Knocked back out of bounds, so they are in full conservation mode. They'll be content with this one to nil lead going into the half. Brevard does end up with the ball, doesn't look like they're in any hurry to get it in play. Might try soccer's version of a Hail Mary here, or not. They're just gonna do a short pass and looks like that's gonna do it for the first half. Yeah, interesting halftime buzzer. So that'll do it for the first half. North Greenville leads it one to nil. And we'll be right back in just a little while. We'll take a short audio break and uh, we'll talk about the new facilities and what else is to come here in Tigerville. North Greenville leads it one to nil. You're watching the North Greenville Sports Network.
Six and a half minutes until the start of the second half. North Greenville leading Brevard one to nil. Lindsay Tooten had the solo goal in the first half. So she will, she starts the goals for the season for the Crusaders. She scores the first one. I uh, did want to go into a little bit more detail about the upcoming facilities. Don't know a ton about them, um, but I do know that the main thing right now, now that the, uh, the weight room is complete, the main thing is softball and track and field currently. Uh, the softball field is going to be made, uh, built sort of in phases. Uh, right now, uh, in time for next season, it'll really be mostly kind of bare bones. Um, I believe it's going to be the field, a scoreboard, and that's about it. Um, phase two, I believe, is when the press box will be built. And then phase three is the seating, which I believe, if I remember correctly, it's supposed to have about 2,000 permanent seats. So it, it's going to be a very, very nice facility. And um, we, we'll actually turn the camera over there real quick. Do that real quick um, just to show you exactly where it will be. So the gravel that you see far in the distance, we'll zoom into it real quick. The gravel at the top of your screen, that is the shape of the softball field. That's where it'll be. Um, home plate will be closest to us to the left, I believe, is where home plate is. Um, so that's softball. And then to the right of that, you can start to see the shape of it. That is the track and field complex where it will go. Uh, so definitely excited about that. Um, North Greenville will not host any events this upcoming season, but in the future does hope to. So exciting things for the Crusaders. Um, there, there are currently plans uh, to build to uh, get turf at the baseball field as well. So it won't just be softball; it'll be baseball as well. And. Um, in the long run, a new basketball slash chapel facility, a new science building as well. So things on the rise here in Tigerville. And um, you know what? We'll uh, while we're showing things, we'll show the new scoreboard in detail. So we'll zoom into that real quick. Again, it was built earlier today, literally built today. So when we say brand new, we mean it, brand new. Um, the bottom is for lacrosse. Uh, what you see lit up currently is all that really soccer has. So um, not a lot of detail for soccer, but lacrosse. You'll have the players and the, looks like the penalty. So so that will uh, be the clock. If for those of you who are familiar with, with lacrosse, they have the 30 second penalties and then the full minute penalties. So that's where those will be listed. And that's a new transition for lacrosse. The NCAA starting to require that all lacrosse fields have clocks to count down the penalty times. And so North Greenville's answer was to get a new scoreboard. And so anyway, that's, uh, I guess that's enough detail for now. Um, if uh, in future broadcasts, the more we hear about the facilities, the more we'll uh, let you know. And um, we do have a new feature. We don't have it for this broadcast, but we do hope to implement it in the future. We will have a drone um, as a camera source uh, for future broadcasts. Uh, those will most likely be um, on broadcast during the weekends. So uh, we're definitely excited about that. Plan on getting some excellent aerial footage for uh, definitely soccer and lacrosse, but um, obviously football as well, and hopefully baseball and softball. Events in the gym. Not much of a point of doing that, but um, you know, we'll, we'll probably show around the campus during those broadcasts as well. So we're definitely excited about that. But um, once again, North Greenville leads it one to nil here at Pepsi Field in Tigerville. And the second half coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching the North Greenville Sports Network.
little bit, not a ton. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, unless it goes to overtime. Which might. It's only one to zero. What's your last name, Christian? So here we go, second half, just about set to begin. We're going to bring in Christian, uh, who is going to be helping us out uh, for the next, or for that throughout the season. He'll be providing some color commentary. So just about set for the second half to begin. All right, so if you just joined us recently, Lindsey Tootin has the lone goal so far tonight. And that's been good enough for the Crusaders to have a one to nothing lead. Second half is underway. And hopefully the music will stop. <laughs> and so the Crusaders trying to be aggressive to start. Brevard kicks it back to midfield. Both teams doing a great job of moving the ball on both sides of the field today. Yeah, the possessions have been impressive. Uh, North Greenville has been able to control the ball a lot better. It, I mean, you know, this is a, a small sample size, but um, compared to most of what we saw last season, uh, they've definitely improved uh, with having good offensive possessions. And um, let's see if they can continue that into the second half. Brevard has been very competitive as well. They've had their opportunities but just haven't quite been able to capitalize, had that one miss off the post. So they certainly uh, could easily have tied this game, maybe even led it with the few other opportunities that they had. But Crusaders hanging on to that one to nil lead. So here's, here comes Brevard, it's gonna be kicked to the near side of the field. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds. North Greenville saying it's theirs, and the official agrees, so it goes to the Crusaders. Both number fours currently going after the ball. That was Curran Sessions for Brevard and Courtney Etheridge for the Crusaders. Whistle blows and some contact. Head coach Andy Robinson does not agree with the call. So Brevard takes over. Right at the corner of the field, it'll be kicked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Tornadoes. This is another great opportunity for Brevard to take the tie. Be able to come back here and be able to put it, be able to get a nice play in. So there's an attempted header. Didn't get much of it, and it goes back to the Crusaders. Actually, Brevard still trying to hang on to it. Crusaders defense set, so not giving up anything there. Looks like Madeline Schober. Still the goalkeeper for North Greenville here in the second half. So it goes back to midfield. And 
heads out of bounds. North Greenville not quite able to handle it. And heads out again. We'll stay with Brevard. Today's game has had a lot of coming back possessions, back and forth, back and forth. Very competitive out there. Yeah, it sure has been. Seems like it's been a pretty even game. North Greenville has been able to take advantage just one time more than Brevard, and, it's, and that's all that the difference is. Meanwhile, the whistle blows again. So it stays with the Crusaders. Schober taking her time with the ball. Don't think that North Greenville's trying to wind down the clock yet. Still obviously a long way remaining in the second half. But meanwhile, the Crusaders had a little bit of an opportunity, but it was stopped by Jocelyn Springer. And a header by the Crusaders. The whistle blows again. And it's going to go to Brevard again. It's still very early in the game, even though it's already at the second half. Bavaria still has a lot of opportunities here to be able to take the take the tie and be able to go back up and tie the game at 1-1. One, one. Couple players fighting for the ball. Contact is made. The whistle does blow, and I believe it's going to stay with the Tornadoes. Well, since North Greenville's located in South Carolina and Brevard's located in North Carolina, we'll go ahead and mention the college football game that is now underway, South Carolina versus North Carolina. Just started, so it's scoreless at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. We'll keep everybody up to date with that game throughout the night, as well as the North Greenville football game between, well, obviously the Crusaders and Charleston Southern. So here's Brevard, but Crusader is able to get the ball from him. So here's Etheridge, who kicked it to the middle of the field, but nobody there. So it goes back to Brevard, but now right back to the Crusaders. 19, Tori Owens with the ball, kicks it back to Jamie Shutt. Now Schober taking her time with the ball, now kicks it to midfield and beyond. Back to Tori Owens, and it's Burns with the ball. And it's gonna be cleared for now at least. And now the Crusaders look to move the ball down the field. Crusaders looking to be set up some offense going on here. Well, the ball be temporarily cleared by the Tornadoes. And here's Tori Owens again. Now Etheridge with the ball and it's gonna be kicked up the sideline. Crusaders trying to keep it in bounds, they do. And now it goes out. It'll stay with the Crusaders. So Jamie Shutt with the ball. Pass it in, 
Ball up in the air, and the Crusaders trying to hang on to it. Header by a tornado. Oh, some hard contact there. So now the ball cleared again to midfield where it will head out of bounds. Another game here at Pepsi Stadium with great, like a great chess match with players and like the pawns moving back and forth so precisely. Apparently we are getting some, still uh, still some buffering issues. Uh, so we'll take a look at that um, at the conclusion of this game in between the two games. I uh, hope to improve the resolution for the men's game. And we do apologize for the inconvenience for this game. No, that doesn't help the women's soccer fans that are that are watching, but um, again, first broadcast of the season, streaming in 1080p for the first time, so uh, we'll we'll just have to bump the settings down just a little bit. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that fixed before the next the next uh, women's broadcast. But anyway, ball back to Brevard. Now kick down the field, a hard header. Owens with the ball. And some contact, and the whistle blows again. Showing great effort on that play, be able to go after it. Effort, effort is 99% of the work. And here is a shot that's going to be wide right, a little bit high as well. So. Brevard trying to get something going. Haven't really been able to get it near the goal lately. So Crusaders playing some good defense. We'll see if they can hang on. Yeah. Haven't seen quite as much, as much aggression as we saw in the first half between the two teams. But I'm sure as this half uh, gets closer and closer to the end, we'll definitely see that aggression come back, especially by Brevard if they keep if they stay down by one goal. The strategy of both teams are going to be tested as we come down to the following. 30 minutes. Yeah, Brevard has numbers currently. Some contact there. Sarah Forrester trying to, she was trying to keep the ball away from Brevard so that her teammates could get down there. Ball did head out of bounds, so looks like we're going to get, but yeah, it will be a corner kick. So another opportunity for North Greenville here. Another big opportunity to take a 2-0 lead if they can pull it through. Again, this is Sarah Forrester who will be taking the shot. And here we go, kick is up and headed away by Brevard and now it will be cleared. Our coach calling out for the press. So yeah, there's some of that aggression right there, which is whenever you're showing a press defense, that means that you're going to be kind of like a little more aggressive than usual. Yeah, just like the way you think of basketball, a lot of the same thing where you want to keep the other team on the other side of the court. Yeah. And some contact, Brevard player down, but she gets right back up. So the ball heads out of bounds for, 
for Brevard. Caitlin Burns will be the one to pass it in. So here comes Brevard. Once again, trying to get something going. There's a shot, but nowhere close. So kicked in by Schober. Goes back to her. And heard the heard Brevard saying to press her and did work, but did head out of bounds. So North Greenville hangs on to the ball and now Courtney Etheridge Possibly going to give the Crusaders another opportunity, but goes right to a Brevard player and is kicked away. And now it's going to be, well, I was going to say it's going to be kicked out of bounds, but number 11, Lauren, Pr or excuse me, that's uh, Alexis Griffiths, came over to get it and now kicks it down the field where it will head out of bounds. So it'll go back to the Crusaders, a goal kick. Brevard trying to get anything going that they can. Seen some good possessions by them and also some just some long kicks just to see what happens. Brevard is definitely on the attack to coming down with the long ball that they, that they keep hitting over and over and over again, it seems like. Crusaders need, seem to be a little bit more in a conservative offense. While they are going for the attack, it's not as often or not as many times as it has been in the first half. I may have an opportunity here though, but Jocelyn Springer able to get to it. and So she will kick it in the midfield. Now the ball heads back out of bounds. And here comes the Crusaders. Will they be called off sides? No, they won't. Off the post. Oh, that was a great cross pass coming up to the front, forefront of the goal. But you couldn't do it. An unfortunate Unfortunate play by the Crusaders, but a big break for Brevard. But with that being said, Brevard had one go off the post earlier, so you could say that they're even now. Brevard still in the attack as always. Moving the ball with a lot of fluidity right now. Brevard goalkeeper Jocelyn Springer deserves credit for making that stop. When that ball came off the post, she had to react very quickly to get that ball, otherwise it goes back into play and North Greenville potentially could have kicked it in. So a nice job by her to react as quickly as she did. And Brevard calling for a foul and they get it. And that's gonna be a yellow card. And it's the Brevard player that, okay, so a yellow card was called on Brevard. You can probably see at the bottom of your screen, Brevard head coach did not appreciate that call. Didn't get the number of who it was charged to, but Brevard will have a yellow card. Their first of the season. That ball's gonna be kicked away into 
the Brevard bench, so it heads out of bounds, and it will stay with North Greenville. And ooh, some hard contact there. Both appear to be okay. Stays with the Crusaders. Clock did stop when that yellow card was called, so we'll wait for the we'll wait for the stadium clock to catch back up. It's currently at 27 minutes and two seconds. So Brevard trying to get something going, but it's kicked away by a Crusader. It's number 10, Jamie Shutt. Ball heads out of bounds. So the ball heads to the far side. Rivard trying to keep it, no, North Greenville trying to keep it in bounds, but was unable to do so. So it'll be a goal kick for Brevard. Nice over the top pass as they come in. And Springer made some contact with their own player. And it's, it was charged to North Greenville. Can't blame head coach Andy Robinson for being upset about that. Two Brevard players definitely made contact with each other. Head coach Andy Robinson asking for the call, but I don't think he's getting it from the officials. So Crusaders, even though they have a one to nil lead, maybe getting a little frustrated here. Brevard just struggling to get it to the other side of the field. North Greenville has done a great job of keeping it on Brevard's side of the field. Not looking to really attack, just looking to keep passing it, take off some more time off the clock. And that ball will be kicked out of bounds. So it goes back to the Crusaders. Now the ball will be cleared to midfield. Crusaders still able to keep possession of it. And ball's gonna head out of bounds and it will go to North Greenville. And no, they corrected it. The ball, ball movement's gonna be the key. For the Tornadoes, Anita Mariscova. So Mariscova re-enters the game for Brevard. Yeah, the official at the sideline initially pointed to North Greenville's side, but then corrected himself and said it was Brevard's ball. Brevard needs to take advantage of this. There's some contact and the whistle does blow. Not gonna be a penalty kick, but 
Looks like it will be a free kick. Here's the kick, a header still in the air. And a couple of players down, but it is saved by the Crusaders. Madeline Schober with another save. Another great save. You a lot of instinct in that play right there by the North Greenville goalie coming and in that, to sit down on the ball. And that was a dangerous play, though, because one of the North Greenville players didn't see the number, but she she was able to uh, d do the header for the ball, and it ended up in the air. So that's always dangerous, and it was right in front of the goal, too. So North Greenville fortunate yet again. Ball, ball movement on this for Bavar's next set is going to be very key, especially with our coming to the final minute, final 20th minute as they set up for a corner kick. So a North Greenville substitution will be made. 11, Lauren Previtt re-enters the game. For number 10, Jamie Shutt. One of the Rivard coaches was arguing that the clock should have been stopped, but the clock continues to run. So here is the kick. And batted away by Schober. But Rivard hangs on to it and off the top, off the top post. That is the second time that Brevard has done that. And now here come the Crusaders. They may have, no, nah, don't think they quite have the number advantage over them. But they do get it to the Brevard side, which is what they need to do for the remainder of this game. Just keep it away from their own goal. Ball heads out of bounds. It stays with the Crusaders. So here's the kick, and it goes right to the goalie, Springer. A big turn of events in the game with momentum as Crusaders came down the field, but now has been switched back to Rivard. College football update. North Carolina leads South Carolina 7 to nothing, still in the first quarter. And... Previtt not quite able to keep that ball in bounds. And some contact, but the ball continues to be fought for. Tori Owens with the ball currently. Whistle blows. Contact was made. I think she was calling for more than just a foul. The ball heads down the field. And now that's going to be kicked way out of bounds behind us. Yeah, 
And we're actually getting some drizzle right now. That's surprising. Kind of came out of nowhere. Not a lot of clouds in the sky currently, but don't definitely not enough currently to uh, affect the field or anything like that, but we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it. Whistle blows yet again. Brevard fighting for every possession here now as we final into the set last 17 minutes of the game. Yeah, that's, that's at the point where Brevard is going to have to start being – I mean, that, they've already been pretty aggressive, but I think they're going to have to step it up even more. It's time to turn it up like the IndyCar 500. So that ball heads out of bounds, stays with Brevard. And meanwhile, the whistle blows yet again. It's a substitution. Caroline David will re-enter the game. Looks like she is coming in for number 26, Megan Sheena. So here's Brevard trying to get something. They find an opening in the defense a little bit, but it quickly closes up. There's a shot that's going to be, well, an easy save by Schober. So the Crusaders hang on to the lead. Again, both of these teams coming off of losing seasons. North Greenville won just two games last year. Brevard won, uh, won six. So a win for either team for this game would be, would be a big one. Good way to start the season. I'd still call it drizzle, but it's definitely picked up. So it's, it'll be interesting. And here come the Crusaders, may have an opportunity. Brevard trying to keep it away, and they are able to for the moment. So it'll be cleared, and here comes Brevard. They don't have numbers, but they are getting the ball down the field. That's what they need to do. Tori Owens over there with the ball. Meanwhile, the ball heads back out of bounds. North Greenville playing a little small ball there with a couple of short passes, trying to slowly but surely get down the field. One of the ways to beat the, any kind of press that any soccer team plays is always to have ball movement. Great ball movement will always be able to outdo any press that's ever formed. So the Crusaders hanging on to the ball, but Brevard gets it back closer to midfield. It heads out of bounds. Last touched by a tornado, so it stays with the Crusaders. And meanwhile, it's kicked away by Brevard. Tori Owens coming over, and she will get it back up to Schober. Kicked out of bounds. So it goes back to Brevard. And now that one's going to be kicked out of bounds. But this time by Brevard, so it goes back to North Greenville. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 
So here's Schober. Brevard coaches yelling out orders, so they trying to get their team to be more aggressive. Hasn't panned out just yet, but still a lot of time left. 12-10 remaining in the half. And Brevard saying to put pressure on everybody. And so the ball's going to head to the near side, near the corner. And contact as the ball heads out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Crusaders. Ball going to be repositioned. Kicked out of bounds by Brevard, so go back to North Greenville. Brevard still playing that very high press game they got going on defense. Looking for any chance, Brevard's looking for any chance to get the ball back and have another try in North Greenville Crusaders. Fans on the other side of the field getting into it as this game continues to start to come to a close. Don't know if you've seen the uh, writing on the banks on the other side of the field, but it says finish strong. That is for the women's team. Saw head coach uh, Andy Robinson painting that, I believe it was just yesterday. So, so this is what North Greenville wants to do. They wanna, they wanna be in this situation to where they can finish and have that opportunity to come away with the victory. Meanwhile, there is a Crusader down. Doesn't appear to be anything too serious uh, as she walks off the field. Clock did come to a stop at 10.03. Crusaders will get the ball back to Schober. And here come the Crusaders again, but it's going to be kicked away by Brevard, but kicked out of bounds, so it's going to be a, a corner kick. A great opportunity for the Crusaders on this corner kick to take a to take even a bigger lead at two nil. The rain is picking up here. Yeah, it definitely has picked up. I'm yeah. really surprised right now. The, called for rain today earlier in the week, but over the last few days has not said that it's supposed to rain like this. It's definitely not drizzling anymore. So uh, it is definitely still the summer here in Tigerville. Yeah. So yeah, at this point, it's coming down hard enough to where this is definitely gonna affect the field. So as the field starts to get a little slippery. Ball heads down the field. Whistle does blow. Here's Tori Owens again, gets the ball, but goes out of bounds. So here's an opportunity for Brevard. They're not gonna get too many more of them with less than eight minutes to go. They've gotta get going right now. 
And while the ball heads out of bounds again, stays with the Tornadoes. And battered away by the Crusaders, but Brevard still trying to hang on to it. They will for the moment, or not. It'll be kicked back to Schober. She actually, no. And here's an opportunity. It was mis it, miscommunication ends up knocking the ball out of bounds. And so Brevard will have a corner kick coming up. Brevard has, ha has momentum right now going into seven minutes. And that's potentially a big mistake by the Crusaders. There was no Brevard player even close to where they were fighting for the ball and just inadvertently kicked it out of bounds. So here we go again. Here's the kick and be knocked out of the box and Crusaders now with the ball, trying to get down the field, but Brevard still able to keep it close. And Schober will collect it in front of the goal, so North Greenville able to escape. All right, had to take a quick audio break to readjust some of our equipment here as it continues to get wet, unfortunately. As the rain is coming down hard, this is, just did not expect this today. So the whistle blows with five and a half minutes remaining. Clock continues to run. Bavar looking to push up the field here. And here comes Brevard, but not quite enough speed. I, and actually, excuse me, here comes North Greenville, I should say. And batted away, and Brevard, oh, oh, Brevard player got hit right in the head with the ball. She appears to be okay, fortunately. That was number 14, Kathleen Gant. So with 4.45 remaining, North Greenville trying to hang on. They almost had an opportunity to score yet another goal there. And instead, here comes Brevard. Ball busts through the North Greenville defense, and Brevard does have numbers for the time. And here she goes, a shot that's going to be wide right. And I think Brevard thought that it was last touched by a Crusader, but it was not, so it goes back to the Crusaders. Number eight, Sarah Fong Fonger, or Fonger, I've been struggling with that last name all day. But she took the shot, but it was wide right. Bavar's defense starting to play a little more of a double team going on. Trying to put, put more pressure than they've already had. Rain has, well, I was going to say the rain has lightened up, but I'm not so sure. And almost had another, uh, almost had a Brevard goal. Just barely saved by Schober. And she gets a round of applause from the fans on the other side of the field. Boy, Schober has showed up to play today. And she has a number of saves already. Three and a half minutes remaining. Can the Crusaders hang on? Have a big victory to open up the season. Ball will be cleared. And here come the Crusaders. And battered away by Brevard. And contact made, no whistle. And Brevard has numbers. Three on two currently. North Greenville defense trying to get set, but Nothing going there. 
You know, the Greenville defense did a great job of closing up the corner or the cross pass coming across the field. Looks like the sun's coming back out for us. Yeah, rain's still coming down a little bit, but not quite as bad as it was, although we just had a downpour right onto the camera, unfortunately. And ball's going to be batted out of bounds. Ball heads out of bounds again. So just two minutes remaining. Brevard running out of time. They've got to get something going right now. Brevard with opening over the middle. And attempted a header, but was missed. And a save by Schober. Believe it would have been just slightly to the left of the goal had she not saved it, but I believe she gets credit for a save nonetheless. Rain continues to come down. This is just stunning. I mean, looking up at the sky, there's not that many clouds. We see plenty of blue around, so uh, just sort of a weird situation going on here with the, with the rain. And a, a minute remaining in the game, a minute 10 to be exact. Rivard just trying to attack with all they can. A shot, but an easy save by Schober. So North Greenville just trying to keep the ball away and doing a nice job at it. Brevard just not quite getting to the ball. North Greenville takes it to the corner, trying to keep it in bounds for as long as possible and gets the pass off. So they'll be able to waste a little bit more time. 25 seconds and Brevard finally gets to the ball, but North Greenville able to bat it away from them. Contact and the whistle blows. But Brevard has to hurry. They have to go right now, a desperate shot and it's gonna go right to Schober, and that is most likely gonna do it. Nine seconds remaining, and North Greenville is gonna start the 2015 season with a victory. So that will do it for the opening game for not just the Sports Network, but for women's soccer as well, and it's a good one. North Greenville won, Brevard nothing. So a nice start to the season for the Crusaders and uh, would hang around to do a little bit of a post-game show, but um, we're going to have to get this equipment covered up because it is soaking wet right now. So we are going to go offline. Uh, we will adjust our settings uh, because apparently people did have some connection issues, so we'll take a look at that uh, between games, and uh, hopefully we'll get back to you in just a little while. You're watching the North Greenville Sports Network. We'll be right back. <laughs> 